in the last video, I talked about this idea that there are problems out there where it seems to be hard to solve the problem, but it's very easy to verify an answer. And one example of such a problem was the factorization problem, the problem of being able to take a number and being able to break it down into its constituent multiplicative factors. And there's a problem where uh, we don't know an efficient algorithm to solve that problem, and there seem to be instances that, that could require literally millions of years on a computer, and yet you take any one of the solutions, um, and it's very easy to verify that the solution indeed leads to a factorization because you can multiply fairly efficiently on a computer. You can multiply fairly large numbers without too much effort on even a straightforward simple computer. And what I want to do in this video is give you another example of a problem of this nature. And this particular problem that I'll describe is actually known as the clique problem. Okay, the clique problem. And the clique problem actually comes up in a lot of uh, practical scenarios. And I want to point out there are actually thousands or tens of thousands of problems that seem to have this weird uh, property where they're, they're hard to solve but easy to verify. And, and there are problems that come up in very natural scenarios. So in going into the clique problem in particular, what I'll do is I'll use um, social networking sites like Facebook or, or maybe Google Plus as a motivating example. Now these sites like Facebook and Google Plus, they have, they have many, many users. And we can imagine representing the users as circles. Imagine every one of these circles uh, represents a user uh, on Facebook, okay? And so you have lots of circles, okay? And the reality is that users on Facebook, some of these users may be friends with each other. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line between two users if they happen to be friends on Facebook. And so you may have uh, some intriguing patterns, uh, you know, some guys who are, who are friends with each other, and, and uh, you may have... Uh, you know, some guys who are maybe who know each other but aren't friends with anybody else on Facebook, and then you may have some weird, uh, you know, some some weird relationships. Maybe some somebody out there who's doesn't have very many friends. But you can imagine that maybe Facebook has a has an underlying graph structure that resembles uh, something along these lines. Okay, so you basically will have um, people who are who are friends with each other, and if they're friends, you have a line between them. Uh, and you know, these circles are often also called nodes uh, in a graph. And what we start to notice in, in a graph of this nature is that there are certain groups of friends uh, which we call cliques, and this is in the, in the general sense of the word clique, uh, who all know each other really well and are friends with each other. For example, right here is a clique of four users. So you can see um, down here you've got, you've got a clique with these, these four users. Uh, they all seem to know each other really well. Okay. And this structure, as I alluded to earlier, uh, is known as a graph, okay? And a graph basically is, is a mathematical structure, uh, it's a mathematical object uh, that comprises a set of vertices. Uh, vertices are also known as nodes. In this case, these vertices are circles, and these vertices represent users in a social network, but uh, they could be anything for that matter. Uh, and then graphs also contain a list of edges, uh, where an edge might connect uh, two particular vertices. I just basically connect vertices. And somewhere actually inside of Facebook's back-end server, somewhere in its data warehouse or in its, uh, its data center, uh, there is a representation of a very large graph. Uh, that representation might be stored on multiple computers, uh, but underneath somewhere, Facebook does have a graph of this nature represented somewhere in its infrastructure, a graph that tells Facebook whenever two people are friends with each other. Okay. And now one very interesting question you can ask, and one question for which Facebook, I think, is very interested in an answer, is whether there are any cliques of a particular size in this graph. Okay, That is, is there a group of nodes that are all connected to each other in every which possible way? Okay, And, and this nomenclature, this terminology of a clique, it's used in graph theory, and it also corresponds to the definition that you probably know of a clique. Right? If you talk about a clique in a social circle, and in the context of a social circle, a clique is basically a set of people, a set of friends, who are all friends with each other. Okay? And in, in a graph, in this mathematical object, in this, 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 uh, um, this mathematical representation, a clique is basically a set of nodes that are connected to each other in every possible way. Okay? So maybe I can give you some examples to make that a bit more clear. You know, if we're talking about a three clique, a three clique would look something like this. It would look like a triangle, right? You have three nodes, and they're all connected to each other. A four clique would look like 
uh, would look like this. It's like a square, okay, with a cross in between. Okay, a five clique, and you might want to think about what this might mean on your own. Uh, this would be kind of like a, essentially a, a pentagon, but again with every possible uh, cross pair connected. So this, these are what different cliques look like, uh, and so on and so forth. And again, the clique problem asks, you know, for a given graph G. So imagine we, we call this graph, this graph G. Um, the question is, you know, is there a clique? Is there a clique of size k? Okay, for for some integer k. So in other words, is there a four clique or a five clique or a six clique? And in the input to the clique problem is the graph G uh, together with a parameter k. And then the the output is yes or no if there is a clique of that size. Okay. Now, first of all, this problem I want to point out happens to be in NP. It happens to be a non-deterministic polynomial time solvable problem. And here's why. Well, first of all, it's a decision problem, right? It's got an answer that's either yes or no. Okay. Secondly, there is a very simple verification procedure or a proof to validate a yes instance of this problem. Okay. In particular, if someone actually showed you the, the underlying clique, you could verify it easily. So imagine I asked, for example, in this, this big Facebook graph, I said, hey, is there a clique of size four in this graph? Well, there's a very efficient proof. Somebody could say, hey, here are the four nodes, okay? And if you take a look at these four nodes, actually, this is a bad example, because uh, um, to have a clique of size four, you have to have these guys connected to each other. But imagine this is the graph. Imagine you've got this graph here, and someone showed you these four nodes. You could verify that, hey, there are these four nodes, and they seem to have every pair of edges between them that, um, that I care about um, is there. And so therefore, these four nodes must comprise a four clique. And so the answer to the question of whether or not this graph has a four clique would be yes. And there's an efficient way to verify that answer if you are actually given the nodes in the clique. And it turns out that given the nodes in the clique, you can verify it efficiently. They're not, there are only so many different cross pairs you've got to worry about when you actually know which nodes specifically you have to focus on, OK? Now, what's interesting is that even though it can be easy to verify that a graph has a clique of a particular size, uh, it seems like trying to find the clique yourself. If someone said, hey, find a clique of size k in this graph, being able to find that clique yourself in the first place, and that actually appears kind of hard to do. Okay, If you try to enumerate all possible groups of k nodes, that would actually get really computationally expensive to do very quickly. Okay. Uh, that number would start growing exponentially in k. Okay, and really, no one knows of a much faster way to solve the clique problem. There are slightly faster algorithms, nor really is there any type of mathematical argument that proves that no faster procedure exists to solve clique. Okay, and the clique problem turns out to be very interesting for another reason as well. Okay, and I will tell you that other reason in the next video.